Hello, good afternoon everyone, sorry for the slight delay. We are starting this year's sustainability talks uh, as the sustainability platform. We're organizing these talks both to enhance, create and disseminate knowledge about sustainability. Uh, this year's talks start with Mrs. Sheyda Dağdeveren Hill uh, from Deniz Temiz uh, Derneği. She is going to inform us about the sea and ocean plasticity uh, issues, which is a major threat. Uh, please join me in welcoming Mrs. Hill. Mrs. Hill, floor is yours. Uh, thank you for inviting me uh, today, Sustainability Talks. And uh, let's have a different start together. Uh, can we have the music first? I know everybody is tired. We had lunch and we are just looking How do you feel now? Are you relaxed a little bit? Yeah. Uh, where's mine? Like I said, I'm grateful for our planet because it provide, provide, provides everything for human life, for our ecosystem. But there is something wrong now with our planet. After industrial revolution, keep started changing little bit differently and little bit in a negative way, in my opinion. Let's say industrial revolution brought us lots of different opportunities. One of them is technology, other one is manufacturing. And also, it brought us miracle invention. Can you guess what it is? Yeah, 
It's plastic. Why it is a miracle invention? Because plastic is wonderful. It's everywhere. It's a lifesaver. Because it's durable. That make it last long forever. Automotive industry, piping, isolation, the chair you are sitting now, it's really strong material, it's durable, it's plastic. And it's a premature baby, not anymore, before. Medicine, to give her medicine, they use plastic pipe. To keep her warm, they use a plastic bag. It's a good thing, actually, because it's saving a baby's life. And another one is, you know, artificial heart well. If you have some problem with your heart and after your having operation replaced with artificial heart well, and it stayed there forever. It saved you. It saved your life. What happened and what, what, why am I talking to you here today about plastic pollution? What's wrong with this plastic? If it's really good thing, if it saves our life, if it's everywhere. One of the problem is, uh, it's 1950s. I didn't see this advert advertisement, but I found it on internet. And it says that there was a competition between Camel and uh, Marlboro uh, tobacco factories because they were advertising to sell more and more. Even they told, if you have asthma, you can have different cigarette filter and you can still smoke. It's ridiculous now. Ha has anyone uh, got any cigarette pack with you? Tobacco pack? Can we look for it? Can I borrow it? After this ad, and it says tobacco uh, smoking is going to kill you. What happened? Because lots of people had terrible disease which is related to tobacco. And World Health Organization paid lots of money to save people from cancer, from other disease. At the same time, after five years, there was another advertisement. Throwing, throw away living. What's that meaning? Because they introduce us single-use plastic, disposal plastic. They told us it's going to change your life. You don't need to clean your dishes. You don't need to carry your bottle everywhere. Just buy it, cons consume it, and throw it away. But the problem, where is away? What does it mean to you? Can you describe it to me? Where is away? LA is our planet now because we are told before plastic is durable, it's magic, it's wonderful. But now I would like to say plastic is terrible because it's durable. It stays years and years in the environment, in the ocean, in the land, everywhere. Now, like uh, four, four years, five years, 
We are reading on the news, on the highlights about plastic pollution. What's happening to the world? Like I told before, they told us, throw it away. Yeah, but another, another part told us, after using it, please send it recycled. Since 1950s, the plastic we produce is nearly 8.3 million metric tons. It means lots of to us, lots of to our environment. We send 9% of plastics to, rec to, rec to recycle. What happened to the other part? Do you have any idea about it? It's everywhere. It's in the air, it's in your cigarettes, it's in your drinking water, it's in your tap water, it's in the lake, it's in the soil, it's everywhere. They released a study beginning of this week. It says, we found microplastics in the salt. So we use it every day for every meal. Everybody use it. We know the other part is in the environment. We consume it in the land. We can say 80% of ocean plastics come from land. We dump every year at least 8 million tons of plastics in the oceans into our sea. And another research says that Marine litter, most of them is plastics because it's everywhere, like we said before. When we throw it in the litter, it doesn't stay there. For example, there's a windstorm strongly, you just throw away plastic bag, it's really light material, and with wind, it removes very quickly. If you live in seaside, it reaches to sea easily. And there are other ways here also. But there is another scary scenario. It says, by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish in the world ocean. Who believes that now? Maybe you heard it before, but maybe some of them just recently you heard it. Do you believe that? Do you believe that research estimated? You believe, you believe, you. Let's watch a video. And there is a scuba diver. Uh, British scuba diver. He went to uh, Bali last year and he recorded some video. It's really shocking. While you are watching the video, please try to count how many fishes you can see there. Yeah, 
one, two, maximum eight. Do you believe that scenario now, by 2050, there will be more plastic than fish? It's just, it was just the last year. And we know also marine debris, most of them is plastic, like I said, and they sink in the, in the bottom of the oceans, bottom of the seas. But there is a problem with that, with us, because we know life began in the ocean. Ocean is life. Do you remember we took do two breaths in, in the beginning. One of them is comes from, is coming from forest. Other one is coming from ocean, sea. It pro provides us ocean. According to studies, 50 to 70% of oxygen it provides for human, for animals, for our system. You know, there are lots of different species in the oceans. One of them is whales. They are very in intelligent creatures. Most of them uh, have seen them in the documentaries, on the TV, or if you are interested in that kind of stuff, you must watch it, you must have seen it lots of time. But there is another video I would like to show you. We don't like to see it. We don't like that kind of thing seeing much. We have uh, some uh, technical video, video technical problem. That's why we are changing the file format. Sorry about that. consume, killed it, we did it. Unfortunately, we don't like seeing that kind of thing. Another one is sea turtles. We like them. They are really sweet creatures. And you know, uh, they visit us every year. They leave their eggs and after they travel back in their land, but they can't, they can't separate with, they can't see the difference with plastic bag and jellyfish. They like eating jellyfish so much, but after we throw a plastic bag into ocean, it smells like a food, like a delicious sandwich for them because of the ocean smell. Can we watch the video, please? You will see in the video, they confuse about plastic bag and jellyfish. And after eating lots of plastic bag, their digestive system, system they got packed with plastic bags. You can see here plastic bags. And she's eating there jellyfish, but now you will see eating here plastic bag. 
lots of animals, lots of sea turtles has been dying. And another marine ecosystem creator is seabirds. This is albatross. It's a 90 days albatross chick. She died because she was very hungry. After they opened, they had a surgery for her and they found lots of plastic in her stomach. It was really tightly packed. She was feeling like a stuffed, and, but she was hungry. She was starving for food. Unfortunately, she couldn't eat them. She couldn't digest them. Her mom just passed food on her mouth from land because her mom just found plastic on the land, on the beach. That's why she died. This is a handful of plastic. 90% of seabird in the world, at least once in their life, they have a handful of plastic. They eat a handful of plastic in their life. You must be thinking now, oh my God, we, can't, we came here to just learn new things, but we are just seeing really scary, li really unpleasant thing. This is a sea, beautiful sea, beautiful waves. But there is a problem with this also. Some wave and salt. Three of them make plastic something. Can you guess it? What can they? Yeah, break it, break down, break down to little pieces. And we call it microplastic. Let's have a look at this video. It will save us. Entered our food chain. Microplastic is everywhere, like I said. There are more than five trillion pieces plastics into our ocean. There are different types of microplastics. Uh, some of them come from our clothes. When we wash them, they release the environment. And other one is like uh, we have food container, like a takeaway container. They easily break down and it goes to environment. And another one is plastic pellets. It's generally used, we, we use it for manufacturing. And another one is cosmetic products, like a toothpaste, like a peeling, like a shower gel. One dentist found a tiny piece of plastic into teeth, on the teeth. When you go to home or when you go for shopping, 
please check your toothpaste if it has polyethylene microplastic another one is like cosmetic products like washing gel that kind of stuff they made this research they separated the microplastic from the product look at here and here and here it's really high amount in the product you can recognize this product most of them maybe you use it or you know it and it's the same one what's what is the main problem with microplastics? Have you heard about planktons? Yeah. Now, we are going to see the relation between planktons and microplastics. A teeth space and after using shower gel any wastewater treatment system can't catch them they are really tiny 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 very small that's why it releases environment river ocean lake uh, nearly one month ago there was a new research about this you know, mosquitoes, they start to eat it. Microplastics are found in their body because, you know, uh, the lake, around the lake, they live in that kind of uh, humid, humid area and they start to take the microplastic into their body. That's really s scary. And also, if the microplastics are in the lake, in the ocean, in the sea, of course, fish consume it. And we eat fish. We have told up to now its physical effect. How about the chemical effect? We call plastic marine debris like a cocktail of contaminants because it has lots of different chemicals which gives plastic transparency like a durability and other things. You know our endocrine system is one of the most important systems in human bodies. But when you put your drink or your food in plastic and when you store it in the fridge or when you leave it in the sun, it starts changing the plastic structure getting harder or smoother at that time it 
it leaks the chemical into your drink or your food. What happens if that kind of chemical is in your food, in your drink? It starts mimicking our endocrine system. World Health Organization and says they are endocrine disruption chemical. That's why we start to think about its effect in human body. And there is a new approach. When you go for shopping, when you buy something which is made of plastic, and it says BPA free. Have you heard it? BPA free? Yeah, it's everywhere now. How about just one chemical? Can it cause everything? Can it cause all the mates? Can it cause your endocrine system? Problem? No. Because, like I say, it's a plastic marine debris is a cocktail of chemical. Let's see. BPA, PHA, PAH, and phthalat. All together, they cause astrologic activity, astrologic problem. It's a new thing, but it's a also very known thing. Recent research says a surgic activity happens when a chemical like BPA or phthalat or PAH leaches from plastic and enters to the body where it mimics the hormone estrogen. It causes women and men estrogen problem. Okay, everything is so bad up to now. What shall we do to change it? Why are we here today? Why did you decide to come to listen to me? Because you want to take action in your mind. You are thinking it's a big dilemma for everybody, not just for sea turtles, not just for whales. Because I don't know. I would like to show this first. It's a, it was a Tuesday, I think. And in Australia, they say we found plastic particles in human digestive system, in human stool. What does it mean to you? We have lots of microplastics in our body and we can't digest them. And because our gut bacteria not perfect to break them, not perf perfect to digest them, an excess of microplastics, when we go to toilet, we release it. That's a really, really big thing. Like I said, we need to act for planet, for our future, for our children. That's why we can change something in our life slightly. Like a carrying shopping bag, like a carrying reusable coffee cup, like a carrying if you want to carry your own food, you can use reusable container. We have 
different life. We have different needs. We have different lifestyle. We can find something to fit our life easily. We can do this. We can act. We can achieve this easily. First, you need to believe yourself. And another, it was a bad news. This one. There is a, another good news. It happened yesterday. EU Parliament voted for voted to ban single-use plastics by 2021 around across the Europe. Before it happened, we can change. There is nothing like that in our country now. Just uh, 2019, we will start to pay when we use shopping bag, plastic shopping bag, we, we will pay for tax. That's all for us. But you have seen the scenario, you have seen the animals, you have seen the plastics, what did for our environment. Before it's too late, you, we can act, we can change. We don't need to wait for any political decision. Because we have to realize that we are the last generation to stop plastic pollution. We have the last generation to change things in a better way for our planet. Because I like this approach that's why I wanted to share with you, no water, no, no life, no blue, no green. Maybe you have heard different things today. Maybe it was just a repeat for you. But whatever it is, you know, plastics could be harmful for our life for our ecosystem. It's time to change. If we want to leave plastic planet for next generation or for future generation, we can carry on living like that. But if you want to leave blue planet for our children, for animals, for other life in the planet, we need to change. We must change. Thank you for listening to me. If you have any question, please don't hesitate or sharing idea. Yeah, please. Thank you very much um, for like, joining us today and uh, sharing this nice talk. This is uh, that's, that's lovely to hear. Uh, I just wanted to ask about what you think um, in terms of bioplastics. Do you think perhaps that the future of plastic production industry can be more based on uh, biologically produced plastic rather than totally synthesized plastic that we all then see in the world of polymers? Yeah. So do you think the enzymes which actually work on the resonance corn starch to change it into bioplastics can perhaps become a part of the solution on the industrial side? Yeah, uh, it's a good question. Uh, the microplastics, I think, uh, is a new research approach, like um, some plant-based microplastics, uh, uh, bioplastics. Uh, they, uh, they, are uh, they are studying on it. Like, but it's just uh, 1% of the total plastic consuming in the world. I'm a little bit worried about it. If I know it's a biodegradable, when I uh, throw it away, when I leave it environment, it can cause more consuming because I know it's biodegradable. It's not a whole 
whole part of solution. Be, but like a, a crisp pack, like a water bottle, like a, some hygiene, food hygiene uh, plastics we need to use in our life. We industry need to use it. it it's a must. And for them, it's a good material. It's not a solution yet, and just a, um, it's the, it needs to be sustainable protect, uh, manufacturing to use it our life. I can't hear. The overconsumption is just so high, the rate, that again, the nature can't take it. I mean, yeah. uh, I mean that's the, I mean, the problem is the, the balance. We can't yeah. actually, it's just, uh, even in the future, if we come up with the biodegradable, so we're going to produce a lot of that biodegradable again. Yeah. Yeah. So the nature ends up with... Yeah, it's, it's the bioplastics, as much as I know, I'm not an expert in the field, that's why I wanted to ask your opinion. Okay. Is there recent research coming from you as well? But what I saw was that it's actually biological produced. The thing that makes it different from... Yeah, it's a plant-based material. It's only like an uh, uh, organic-based kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, normally it's a little bit different than biodegradable. Yeah, also, like, we need to it's limit... It's organically based, uh, like changing corn syrup into plastic by a biological bacteria enzyme. Uh, some of the producers actually call it uh, uh, the process of like creating yogurt a little bit. Yeah. Like, for, like you know, fermentation of sweets, let's say. And it is totally based on organic products. But still there are worries. That's why I wanted to ask your opinion, because the production costs seem to be very high to begin with. And the second thing is that availability of it. And again, whether, you know, how much we consume should actually be dependent on that. Yeah. Because as you said, the worry comes up around uh, increasing perhaps the possibility of usage just by thinking that, OK, it's already biologically produced, so it will be degraded in the nature, which is probably not the case. Yeah. Because the degrading rate of the bioplastics have also still not been proven to be stable. So therefore, uh, I mean, again, I'm trying to understand the topic a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Amelia, for your insight as well. Because we need to change our uh, idea, our approach. Uh, even it's biodegradable, even it's plant-based plastics, and even it's most environmental friendly material. The problem is overconsumption, overpopulation. We need to change our habits, our consuming, because we see it, we see using single plastics single-use plastics, is luxury for our life. It's not just a water bottle. It's for everything. It's kind of, um, we think, for example, you know, chicken. It could be really dangerous for our life. We can have food poisoning easily because of, if it goes off. How can we buy it? In a glass or in a stainless steel container. When we go to the supermarket, when I say, can I use my container? And they will look at me really weird. I, I, they, will, they will think, I'm sure, I'm weird. We need to change uh, each stakeholder, each site, mind to do a problem. Actually, plastic is a real problem now. The, like you said, there are lots of study. They are trying to find new plastic material, like uh, two or three beverage, uh, beverage company, they are working on it because they have lots of pressure by NGOs, by government, by consumers. And 
they invest, they, uh, they uh, spend lots of money for this research. They found finally a new material. But we will see if it's really biodegradable, if it's really not harmful for environment. This is very critical and very new issue, very new. Uh, it was sleeping before, but after China stopped buying EU countries and other countries plastics to recycle, China stopped it last year, and because of the climate change problem. There is another issue with climate change, but it related with plastic pollution too. And after China stopped it, stopped taking the country's plastic to recycle, EU countries like Great Britain and other countries, they start to think, what we are going to do with that kind of that much plastic in our country because we can't send them landfill, we can't recycle them because recycle industry is the most uh, pollu uh, most polluted industry, one of the most high carbon emission industry. They say, okay, let's ban it. Okay, let's bring plastic tax and let's educate our children, let's educate our people. We have, in our country, we have a little bit study about it. Like I said, 2019, and we, we are going to pay for plastic, using plastic bag tax. It's just a really, really small thing to do. But we can do, we can change our life before any legislation happened. Any question? I know from our previous talks that you've been going to schools, primary schools, middle class schools. How are the new generations approach? Uh, towards plastics and plastic usage. Do you have any insights what's coming next on the next generation? Children are much more sensitive than adults because uh, they, empathy, they make empathy with animal, sea animals, and they say they are dying. I, I don't want to use this. I don't want to take it. They, aware of, they are aware of this issue more than adults. Unfortunately, it's good, but it's so sad at the same time. So there is hope, right? Yeah. Hope is... Hopefully there is always hope. <laughs> yeah, there is always hope, <laughs> like you said. So I think it's a good place to stop. Does anyone have any other questions? Shall we? Okay, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Is, is there a way to uh, clean uh, the ocean? I can't hear you well. Okay. And after we finish, can we have photo here together? I was asking, like, is there a way to clean ocean with the, like, there's a micro, a microplastic in it. Is there a way to clean micro, uh, microplastic? Remove from ocean? From ocean, yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, oceans are deep. Oceans are wide. Oceans are endless. If you think like that, it's really hard to remove from microplastics from ocean. Only we can do now, we can stop sending microplastics into ocean. Uh, there's an Australian young guy, uh, I can't remember his name now, and he had 
really good thing. He found it, and he he invented some uh, ocean surface cleaner. And nearly two months ago, in the Pacific Ocean, they start to use it, and it works. It separates from ocean surface plastics. That's the new generation. We hope. It's our hope for next generation. But for microplastics, it's a little bit harder. Even if you remember the video, uh, plankton can eat them. They are really tiny, tiny, tiny. We can't catch them at the wastewater treatment or water treatment system. That's why they are moving very easily very fast everywhere. For me, there is just one way to stop sending it. Thank you. I think it's time to conclude. Thank you very much for joining us. Today. Thank you so much for inviting us. I would like to give some information about where I am coming from. Uh, like uh, he mentioned before, uh, we are a NGO uh, in Istanbul and uh, we are working with corporate, working with volunteers. We are doing beach cleanup, we are doing lots of projects for our seas and uh, we are nearly 25 years old next year and we would like to see you to join us to create a better world together, which is called Turmepa, Turkish Marine Environment Protection. If you want to be volunteer in our NGO, please contact us. You can contact me too. Yeah, of course. Of course. Thank you very much once more. For the ones who want to take a photo, please join us on stage.